Most people think of bikes as a means of transportation and nothing more. However, for some it's more than just a hobby. It's a lifestyle. When the wind whistles past you at 50 miles an hour, When the trees are so close, your shoulders aren't safe. When the terrain is so unfriendly that your arms turn to jello. No more than 17% of fatally injured bicyclists were wearing helmets. In 1975, there were 1,003 deaths compared to 2016 with only 723. The bike helmet is essential. In 1860, the first bike was developed. This bike was called the Velocipede. Unfortunately, this bike was not a success due to its metal tires, which made riding on cobblestone roads tough. In 1870, shortly after the Velocipede, the high wheel bike was created. In contrast to the Velocipede, the high wheel bike offered a smooth ride because of its rubber tires and long spokes. Because of this, the high wheel bike was a success. However, because of the front wheel was so high, if the riders crashed, they would fall off the bike from high up. Many riders would fall onto their heads, making the need for a helmet a reality. Backers attempted to make a first bike helmet to save them from a hard fall. These first helmets were made of pith, the best material to use during that time. But bikers found that these helmets broke on impact and failed to protect one's head. This gave riders the option of buying a helmet anytime they crashed, or not wearing a helmet at all. Due to new technology, the leather helmet came after the pith helmet, but was not a success. Like the pith helmet, this helmet struggled to save people's heads. In 1975, Bell Auto Parts invented the first real helmet. It was made of hard plastic and foam on the inside to protect people better. This helmet was a huge success, as it was the first revolutionary innovation, which gave way to even greater modern helmets. When I was growing up, remember I was born in 1953, so there was no existence of helmets when I was a, a, a kid. No, there was no helmet to wear, so somebody might wear a baseball cap. I did not start wearing anything that might have been considered a Helmet art. My first racing helmet were helmets that were strap helmets that, that went around here that basically kept your hair looking good if you crashed and for, you know, took all the force from the crash in one spot when it cracked your skull there. So that was pre-hard shell. Hard shell helmets didn't start coming into uh, existence for us in racing. They, uh, Bell first came out with one way back when in the probably later 70s that started showing up. I didn't really start wearing a helmet other than racing regularly till uh, Sterling's mother went to physical therapy school and she did her internship at Kenfield Rehab. And she was like, I don't want to be taking care of a vegetable, so you need to wear a helmet. As you may know, pro riders strive to go as fast as they can in a race. This brings up safety concerns for many riders. Whether it's riding over 55 miles per hour down a dangerous twisty downhill, or navigating sketchy technical terrain in all kinds of weather and conditions. We need to be conscious of these things. Pro riders can face severe concussions and even death from horrific crashes. You may be asking yourself, how can we fix this? Although there is no current way to avoid all risks inherent in cycling, better safety gear is a step in the right direction. Uh, I was on my road bike going downhill on Lima Hill down at about 35 miles an hour and got brushed by a truck on a turn and fell into the pavement. Uh, didn't even get my hands off the handlebars and uh, landed on my right side, broke my finger, uh, my collarbone and cracked
crack seven ribs on the right side and um, hit my head and then went down the road from what I understand I went down the road on my face so not nine cracked bones or uh, broken bones on my right side my face uh, had what they thought was a broken cheek just a couple stitches but uh, my helmet protected my head and no, no damage to my head or my brain or my skull so this is where the this is where I hit on the side of the helmet's all dented and then it's cracked here and then the foam on the inside got all cracked and that's that was in the impact of the road to my head and so that protected my skull and um, saved my life helmets when I was racing um, they were very similar to what you have now um, there is a now a popular look for the mountain bike helmets where they have a visor and there's a little more helmet that tucks around the back of your head that wasn't popular when I was racing it was all cross country and road so basically the mountain bike helmets were very similar to road helmets but they were made to to make more air go by your head at low speeds rather than having to be used at a little bit higher speed um, and the road ones that were a little more aerodynamic helmets have definitely evolved a little bit since I was a kid when I was a kid when I was a little younger than you guys um, helmets were basically all foam they already had the rock lock pieces like they do now they're almost the same thing same materials same fitting system same straps all right the MIPS system allows the helmet to twist a little bit when it's when it's struck so that it can it can take an impact and not take that initial side pull and jar your brain it can twist a little bit that was I believe a Swedish company came out with the MIPS system and uh, licensed it to the to the American helmet makers and uh, that's basically the first that I can remember at least since I've been riding the first time that the helmet technology has actually been used to protect your head better before that all of the new helmet technologies were made to be lighter weight or made to make the helmet more comfortable but not actually to improve the protection of your head. The protection for your head is actually not designed to, to avoid concussions. It's designed to avoid fracturing your skull. And it's the same standards they've had since the, I don't know, 1980s or way before I was riding. MIPS helmets are truly an amazing invention and will help protect many bikers from serious head injuries like concussions and fractures. The MIPS company was invented in 1995 in Sweden. After many years of testing, a true modern model of MIPS was released in the U.S. in 2010. This innovation quickly gained traction and started being used in lots of sports such as skiing, snowboarding, and motocross, as well as biking. The reason MIPS is such a success and highly renowned is because it was the first major upgrade to bike helmets in terms of safety since a bell biker came out all the way back in 1975. The way MIPS works is by having a plastic coating on the inside of your helmet that will shift when you crash, dispersing the shock and reducing the chance of fractures and brain damage. Reflecting on our discussion of MIPS and modern technology, this brings up the question of where helmet technology is going in the future. Even if new technologies come out, are they really improving our society? In the case of bike helmets, continued innovation is something we need to enjoy a safer future. Based on statistics, head injuries related to bikes have gone down every year. Although we would like to dream of having a head injury free society in the future, this may be too ambitious, so we can at least settle for minimizing the risks so that future generations can safely enjoy the incredible fun of riding a bike.